profile of the female narcissist in love, relationships, and friendships. Hello, chain breakers. Let's examine the female narcissist in love, relationships, and friendships. According to most studies, 75% of narcissists are males. Men are diagnosed at a higher rate than women. Narcissistic females are believed to be less common than their male counterparts. Recently, however, studies have shown that these statistics may be incorrect. The covert narcissist is one of the most malignant narcissists of the group and is able to have a tremendous impact and does some of the worst damage as well. Women are more undetectable with more covert manipulative moves that are more subtle than the overt tactics that you may see and expect in narcissistic men. Yet still, they are every as bit as destructive. They are just harder to spot. The damage is worse because of the insidious nature of the wound and the deep emotional and psychological effects that a narcissistic woman is able to inflict as she goes undeterred and undetected. Let's take a look at one of the spirits operating in narcissists the Delilah spirit. See, the Delilah spirit is one of the many demonic spirits that narcissists operate in to keep their victims in bondage and indebted to them. Afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the Valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. That's Judges 16, 4 and 6. And the lords of the Philistines came up and said to her, Entice him and find out where his great strength lies and by what means we may overpower him. And every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and with what may be bound to afflict you. <laughs> The enemy and his principalities continuously assign a Delilah to men and women of purpose and divine destiny. See, the Delilah spirit does everything she can to determine your strengths and your secrets to your anointing so that she is then able to use it to her advantage. The Delilah spirit strives to discover the source of your power and strength in Yahweh. Delilah pestered Samson so much that she wore him out and wore him down. Some may ask, why didn't he just ignore her? Why didn't he leave her? Why didn't Samson just leave her? for the same reasons that you do not leave your Delilah, an ungodly soul tie that you have not or will not sever. Chain breakers, the devil will wear you down until he discovers the restraining principles to which your spiritual gifts are connected. They want to know your strengths and how you keep overcoming in Christ. And of course, we know that Delilah, just like the Jezebel and Ahab spirits, can be in men and women. And when they find out, then the enemy will start tempting you to sell out your gifts. Look at how many around you have sold their anointing and traded their souls for the treasures of this world. And a narcissistic woman filled with the Jezebel python a leviathan and jezebel spirits is no different the delilah spirit knows the moment that you expose the secret of your strength in the lord the delilah spirit works in tandem with the jezebel leviathan python and other demonic spirits to find out 
your plans and your purpose so that then they can mirror and use and manipulate and thwart your purpose in God. So what are the signs of a narcissistic woman? She is disarming. She does everything she can to gain your trust and to gain access to you and your circle. Oh, initially, she is sweet as pie. She uses guilt, charisma, manipulation, and deception to get you to reveal your secrets, your past, and your future plans. All the while, revealing little to nothing about themselves, just like Delilah. She is able to pathologically lie with absolutely no empathy and no remorse. You see, Delilah and Jezebel are only concerned about themselves. While men use success, looks, money, their bodies, sex, narcissistic women use fear, guilt, obligation, their looks, their bodies, charm, pathological lies, parentification to hook their victims. They are highly defensive when questioned and disregard your feelings and have a lack of empathy unless it affects her. Narcissistic women love seeking successful women and latching on to their coattails to either increase their social standing or learning and mirroring her traits and character. She is all about coming off the back of other women. Jezebel always looks for Ahabs to control and dominate. Delilah's look for unsuspecting and dubious Samsons to deceive, even after it is made abundantly clear that they cannot be trusted. A Samson reveals and divulges his or her secrets to destructive Delilah time and time again to his or her own dissolution. The narcissistic woman is jealous, envious, ungrateful, and highly entitled. She is jealous of you, but in her mind, she has to believe that you are envious and jealous of her. Her fragile ego will not allow her to think otherwise. She loves money and cannot get enough of it. She loves her money. She loves your money. She is absolutely horrible with money. She is so materialistic and will do whatever she can to present whatever facade of an image that she wants to present to others. And she will use your money, her money, and anyone else's money to do it. Because of her sense of entitlement, she expects others to take care of her financially. Some narcissistic women are inherently lazy and they use their children as resources to take care of them and their lifestyle. The female narcissist uses men and her children and others solely for her needs, for security, status, and comfort. If she has a husband at home, she likely still seeks out other relationships to fill her bottomless thirst for admiration and attention. This does not mean she will always cheat but she will find narcissistic supply in family, friends, and other resources. Men, relationships, children, money, and material things are used to make her appear more superior to her other female counterparts. The narcissistic woman finds joy in emasculating her spouse or partner and has no problem embarrassing him or putting him down in front of others. If she does not get her way, she is either explosive or highly passive aggressive. This teaches those in her circle to fear her outbursts or to fear her abandonment and rejection through the use of the silent treatment or loud outbursts. She flirts, 
uses guilt, shame, and persuasion to her advantage, either to make her partner or exes jealous or to create leverage for her partner's undivided attention. She loves triangulation. She creates love triangles just for the thrill of it and having others fight over her just to stroke her fragile ego. And because of course, the narcissistic woman's ego must always be stroked. She loves being the center of attention. When you are dealing with a female narcissist, one thing for sure is they will always want to be in the spotlight and they are willing to take out whoever is a threat to keep them in that spot. She is a perpetual victim of life and life circumstances, yet somehow nothing is ever her fault. There is always a sob story and it does not involve her taking accountability in any way, shape, or form. She does not like to apologize. She may fake an apology, but she truly does not mean it because you are really the problem, not her. In her mind, she is never wrong. She loves dishing out criticism or what she would have done to make you better. She relishes in your pain and enjoys when you fail as misery loves company. Inwardly and secretly, she loves to see others in pain. The female narcissist sees everyone as a competition and when you're down, that means that she is up. Nothing brings more happiness to a narcissist than seeing others in pain, whether it is physical, emotional, or psychological. She will not hesitate to use abusive words or cruel actions to achieve her target goal of seeing you shattered to pieces. She must reduce you to words and annihilate you and will use her words, lies, and a good smear campaign to do it. She loves cutting you down with her words. It boggles your mind because at times she can be sweet and others she can be cold as ice. The female narcissist disregards your boundaries. Boundaries are for losers in a narcissist's mind. If you agree to meet at a certain and designated time, she'll be certain to waste your time by having you wait, unless it benefits her to show up beforehand or to show up on time. There must be an incentive for her to do this. She'll keep you on the phone for hours, gossiping and attempting to extract information and details from you. They'll make you feel guilty for standing up to yourself because she's a perpetual victim. Narcissistic women hate boundaries and being told no. In their minds, they do whatever they want to do and use whoever they need to use and they act passively aggressive and sulk when you tell them anything that they do not want to hear. On the home front, one way the covert narcissist woman thrives is by having two faces, if not more. She is loving on the surface and presents her children as extensions of herself, but behind closed doors, she is quite the opposite. On the surface, the children may be dressed well, the home may be clean, but she can be emotionally neglectful. To those who do not understand narcissist abuse and narcissistic mothers, most people do not understand. It is hard to explain to others unless they have experienced the amount of damage that a covert narcissist woman can do to you and your family. You will be frustrated if you attempt to convince everyone that behind closed doors that she isn't the superwoman 
that she is perceived to be. Children are sacrifices and become highly enmeshed in their mother. Her love is conditional and the children learn to do whatever they can to receive her love, even if it's rejecting themselves. Her children must worship her. They become sacrifices for her relationships. They are small sacrifices in her eyes to achieve her goals of security and comfort. She will stay even in abusive relationships. She will stay in relationships where she is the abuser. She will stay in relationships where she is being abused. And she will subject her children to these relationships all for her gain. She loves to post her children's accomplishments on social media as if they were her own. She may have little to no accomplishments of her own, so her children serve as narcissistic supply to garner the accolades that she so desires. And even if she does have accomplishments of her own, the children serve as a look at me, we are perfect image to society. Today's society encourages and breeds narcissists. We live in a world where children are posted all over social media and public domains for their parents' glory, even at the risk of their safety and boundaries. This does not mean that all parents that do this or all women that do this is narcissistic. One thing that a covert narcissist type of mother does to her children is devalue and triangulate them. She uses one child as a scapegoat, the other as the golden child, and others as the invisible child. If you are an only child, Lord, please help this child. This child must play all roles to their narcissistic mother. Although all children are seen as extensions of the mothers and can play any particular role at any given time, it is all about how she feels and wants to be seen in that given moment. The golden child is the idealized child, her prized possession and protector. This child has the greatest chance at being raised in her narcissistic image. The scapegoat has the greatest chance for escaping the family system. The mother rejects her true self and likewise teaches the children to inwardly reject themselves as well. This sort of covert and venomous narcissistic mother leaves her damaging imprint on her children's subconscious and psyche well into their adulthood. The effects surface as feelings of inadequacy and not feeling as if they are good enough. This grooming sets the children up for future emotionally, psychologically, and possibly physically abusive relationships later on in life. If a narcissistic mother has a son and her son is married or in a relationship, her daughter-in-law is in a secret competition that even she is unaware of. She does not know that if the son has not severed the ungodly soul tie that he has with his mother, she will never be first in his life. The mother is and will always come first if he has not severed the tie. He knows that mom is first in his life. And secretly, the mother knows it and even the daughter-in-law knows it. The narcissistic mother can be overbearing, inflicting her parental style onto her grandchildren, even at the request of her children not to do so. She respects no one and their boundaries and rules in their own home are mere suggestions to her. She knows best, no doubt. Daughters of narcissistic mothers are often the scapegoats. 
the scapegoat bears the brunt of the emotional and psychological abuse. The narcissistic mother inwardly hates herself and also rejects her daughters in many ways, especially if they go up or against the grain. If her daughter is married or in a relationship, the son-in-law must get in line with the narcissistic family dynamics. Because as with a son, mom comes first. The son-in-law plays third wheels at times to his mother-in-law because the daughter will drop everything to tend to her mother and her mother's wishes. If the mother-in-law lives with them or visits, it becomes all about her. Narcissists and friendships. A narcissistic woman builds a roster of friends for her own self-gratification. She only wants people that shine light on her own self-perceived greatness. If you point out a flaw or hint at criticism instead of indulging them, it is likely to not go over very well. The narcissistic female sees her friends as competition. She will bully or be aggressive to get her way. She will put them down to demean them. Even if a friend is providing constructive criticism, they feel as if they are under attack when you offer them sound advice. She is a gossiper and mean-spirited, a true mean girl. She is always looking to cut someone down in order to make her pitiful self feel stronger. In friendships, she seeks women who have something that she desires and is missing within herself. This could be success, wealth, children, love, relationships, the person's spirit, favor, or the way that other people admire her. You could not have anything materialistically, or she could have more than you material-wise, but she sees your spirit. She sees the way that people respond to you. She sees your inner beauty, and she wants that for herself. A narcissist demands your loyalty, but betrays the trust of others like it's absolutely nothing. Don't tell anyone, but they'll say before sharing a personal story that's clearly not theirs to share. She is a taker. She takes, takes, and takes until you have no more. She openly brags about the free gifts that she gets by using her charm and manipulation. She loves to brag on the services she gets for free from other business owners, other friends in her circle. She is able to present a woe is me image, victim mentality, so that others feel sorry for her. Unbeknownst to them all, she is playing each and every one of them. Oh, the female narcissist is opportunistic. She purposely seeks out others to use them to elevate herself and her name as she deems fit. The Delilah spirit seeks out information that she needs. And once she's done, she moves on to the next circle of friends. More often than not, Fake friends are narcissistic. They have trouble forming real connections because they are incredibly selfish and only focus on themselves and their goals and their motives. Healthy friendships are about give and take, but a fake friend will take all of your time, attention, and resources and give you nothing in return. Oh, the narcissistic woman in friendships constantly takes advantage of your kindness and views kindness as a weakness to be exploited. Narcissists have a way of giving very little to get a whole lot. 
fake narcissistic friends take advantage of your willingness to listen and they take advantage of your heart and your empathetic nature. They take you on an emotional roller coaster without any concern or regards for your needs. It is always something with them. There's always an issue. There's always an extenuating circumstance and you are expected to be there for them, but they most certainly will not be there for you unless it benefits them. They spend their time gossiping and you know what people say about when people gossip about others to you. They are probably gossiping about you to others. Now don't mistake this with your true friends. Within your true friends, there are things and details that you will be able to share. But with a narcissistic gossiper, it is totally different. In the end, they should not be and they cannot be trusted. Women narcissists are master manipulators. They love hitting below the belt and joking in jest at your expense. They know how to push your buttons by knocking you down and then using superficial charm to compliment you at just the right moment. This creates a vicious cycle where you're tricked into thinking that you need their approval to feel good about yourselves when really they are the ones who are threatening your self-confidence in the first place. The female narcissist has the keen ability to use guilt as a weapon to keep you feeling sorry for her and entrapped in her web of deceit. As I mentioned previously, she uses that victim mentality to keep others feeling sorry for her. Even though she may surround herself with others, there is an emptiness about her, something off-putting that you cannot quite put your finger on. Chain breakers, listen to your intuition. The Holy Spirit is trying to tell you something. Like Delilah, the female narcissist acts very interested in your life. You may know very little about her and her past while she seeks to know a lot about you. She may be supposedly meek, humble, and unassuming while she uses others to get what she wants in life. Proverbs 26 and 24 through 26 says, enemies disguise themselves with their lips but in their hearts, they harbor deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them for seven abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembling. Women, narcissists, and church. Oh, the female spiritual narcissist loves church and community. Whether it be church, religion, or new age spirituality, because at her core, she's a witch. She is a witch who operates in the spirit of divination. Jezebel, Delilah, and witchcraft, these are their tools to seduce, entrance, entrap, and bewitch her targeted victims in her web of deceit. You see, most people believe that witchcraft is sorcery, spells, hexes, vexes, voodoo, but it is also gossiping and manipulating a person's will. The female narcissist is tricky to identify. It is more difficult than identifying a male narcissist. You may be living with a covert, malignant female narcissist and not even realize it. Because of societal norms, men do not speak out openly about emotionally and physically abusive women. Some men suffer in silence for decades, 
married to a narcissistic predator who pretends to be Mother Teresa in public, but is Jezebel behind closed doors. A number of men write the woman off as crazy when in reality, she is a narcissistic demon who has a distinct pattern of using, seeking out information, manipulating, and deceiving in order to accomplish and achieve her goals. Just like the male narcissist, the female narcissist is just as dangerous. We typically do not see them coming. The more you break free and sever that ungodly soul tie, the more you are able to break free from a covert narcissist mother, friend, or relationship, and the easier it is to recover. Cycles and patterns of abuse are increasingly apparent the more you seek God and educate yourself. If something is off, sit with God and ask him to reveal the heart of the person in question. God will show you. The Holy Spirit through discernment will reveal what the person and who the person is. Once he reveals the spirit that she is operating in, it is then up to you to keep this person in your life or not. If you stay, ask yourself what you're really getting from this relationship that outweighs being wounded, used, and humiliated on a regular basis. Begin to do your work. The real work is in recognizing the patterns inside of ourselves that keep us returning to situations that hurt our souls, heart, and mind. As with any ungodly relationship, sever the soul tie and emotional bond. And yes, you can be in an ungodly soul tie and an ungodly relationship with your mother, your friend, and your spouse. If your heart is unforgiving and you are not at the place where you can forgive the female narcissist or anyone that has hurt you, go to God with this. As unforgiveness keeps you tied to the demon, seek deliverance from the spirit of Ahab, from the spirit of Delilah and Jezebel. There will always be Jezebels and Delilahs. The key is discerning sooner rather than later that this spirit is present in someone. If you are feeling guilty about severing ties with a witch, an emotionally abusive Jezebel, a slick and cunning Delilah, then you may need deliverance from the Ahab and Samson spirit. You may need deliverance from the spirit of rejection and abandonment. Break up with those familiar spirits. As the Bible says, therefore come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. God does not want us to enable or tolerate evil. The Bible tells us, resist the devil and he will flee. God does not want us to live with abusers. It is not his plan for you and you enable them when you attempt to do so. God's plan is for those who follow Christ is to live in peace with other believers in his glorious kingdom, not with Satan's children. And make no mistake, men and women narcissists, once they are reprobate, they are Satan's children, female and male alike. I hope this video has given you more insight on the female narcissists in love, friendships, and relationships, and how she operates covertly to keep you in bondage. And while we do not diagnose, and I won't be able to cover each and every type of narcissist in this video, 
This is not to diagnose. This is to discern because we have an enemy who seeks to destroy, who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy your destiny. And he uses narcissists to do it. God wants his people set free. And who the son sets free is free indeed. If you have not already, please go back and watch my videos on the Ahab spirit and the Delilah spirit to learn more about healing and deliverance from these spirits. Let's break those chains, y'all. Thank you for watching, Chain Breakers. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Visit www.narcfreeliving.com for resources and apparel. And if you are on a clubhouse, join the Narcissist Abuse Healing Club. Follow Narc Free Living LLC on IG for more information. Until next time, Chain Breakers, you all be blessed. Let's break those chains.